The history of Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, is a story of heroism and defiance. Every building and artifact in the city bears witness to a nation's struggle to survive atrocities and genocide. One of the most important symbols of Sarajevo's endurance is its Haggadah, a historic Jewish text that has been kept in the city since the 15th century. Dervish Korkut was the man who saved the Sarajevo Haggadah, and a Jewish woman during the Second World War when the city was occupied by Nazi Germany and its allies. Dervish Korkut was a Muslim scholar. He was a, a librarian and a curator at the National Museum in Sarajevo. He was an Islamic scholar who, who got his education in, in Istanbul, in Turkey, in Islamic theology. And for his whole entire life, he worked uh, as a public servant in different cultural uh, and historical institutions in Bosnia. Dr. Hikmet Karcic is among a younger generation of Bosnians who have been researching the history of genocide in their country in recent years and during the Holocaust. Dervish Korkut, especially in today's world, can be an inspiration to people throughout the world to protect minorities worldwide. His whole entire life was a legacy of doing things what was right. In 1941, Nazi Germany and its allies invaded the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. On April 6th, German bombs told the Yugoslavians they were at war with Germany. The Nazis and Italians launched a powerful and coordinated attack from all their bases, supported by virtually unopposed aerial bombardment. The conclusion was inevitable. Although resistance was determined, the Yugoslav army was cut up into many small segments and captured. Sarajevo was part of the independent state of Croatia, which was governed by the Ustasha, a Croatian fascist and ultra-nationalist movement. Very quickly they set up concentration camps throughout the whole country. The most infamous was uh, Jasenovac, where a majority of uh, the Yugoslav Serbian population was uh, uh, incarcerated and killed along with uh, Jews and Romas and all other anti-fascists from Yugoslavia. The Ustasha were very brutal in the killing sprees throughout the country, and they were infamous for using machetes and hammers in order to kill their victims, rather than, than uh, wasting bullets on their victims. Some of the most horrifying photographs taken during World War II in Yugoslavia show Ustasha militants brutalizing prisoners in concentration camps. The Nazis and their allies also planned to cleanse Sarajevo of its Jewish heritage. This included destroying or stealing the Haggadah and other Jewish cultural artifacts. It was in this atmosphere of fear and horror that in 1942, Dervish Korkut single-handedly saved the Sarajevo Haggadah from destruction. The text was kept in this building the National Museum in Sarajevo, where Korkut worked as a curator. The Haggadah tells the biblical story of Exodus, read by Jews at Passover. It was brought to this country by Jews who were expelled from Spain in 1492 and settled in Bosnia. When World War II started, Dervish Korkut was working as a chief librarian and curator at the National Museum in Sarajevo. In early 1942, uh, General Fortner, a German Nazi officer, entered the museum seeking the Sarajevo Haggadah. Before his arrival, Dervish Korkut took the Haggadah from the library safe and hid it inside of his clothes. Once General Fortner asked uh, Korkut uh, where the Haggadah was and to hand it over to him, uh, Korkut replied that the Haggadah was not in the library and that he handed it over that morning to other uh, German officers. 
And this way, he managed to save the Haggadah and bring it home. Korkut risked his life because he believed in doing what was right. He believed in, in keeping uh, national treasure of Bosnia and of Jews safe. He knew that if the Nazis got their hands on, on the Haggadah, that it would be uh, taken out from Bosnia and most probably destroyed. So in this way, he decided to risk his life in order to save the Sarajevo Haggadah. Most of the Jews who survived the occupation in Yugoslavia did so because they joined the communist-led partisans, the only such group that was not anti-Semitic and accepted Jews and women as equals. At the time, anyone who helped a Jew or a member of the resistance could be summarily sentenced to death. Later in the war, Dervish Korkut and his wife Serveta Lush risked their lives to save the life of a young Jewish woman, Donna Mira Papo. The Corkett family knew that they could be punished by execution for this act of humanity. Mira Papo was basically homeless, wandering the streets of Sarajevo. When she came across one of her uh, parents' uh, friends, he took her to, to a man in the National Museum and he, and he asked him to, to help her to provide sh safe shelter for her, because she had nobody else to turn to. Uh, this man in the National Museum was Dervish Korkut, so Korkut did not know this person or her family at all. Nevertheless, uh, very quickly, he, he, he uh, took her uh, into, into his car. Uh, they drove up to, to the old town in Sarajevo, where his um, house was, and he told, he told his wife and his family that uh, from now on, she's going to be a part of the family, that she was going to be given a Muslim name and Muslim clothing so as to uh, 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 show herself a as a Muslim towards uh, all, all other uh, people from the, from, the, from the outside. Jews were not the only targets of the Nazis and the Ustasha regime. They also persecuted Roma, Serbs, and other groups they deemed undesirable. At least 26,000 Yugoslavian Roma were killed during the Second World War. Dervish Korkut did not believe in or support Nazi racial ideology, but he used the fake science at times when he thought it could save lives. Dervish Korkut and several other uh, prominent Muslim intellectuals set up a, a, a committee and wrote an ac academic report on the Roma in Bosnia and in Yugoslav lands. And using German authors and, and Polish authors, they uh, wanted to prove and, and, and to save the, the Romas by claiming that these Romas were in fact Aryans. And in this way, uh, they, they managed to, to tell the, the new Ustasha government that uh, what they were doing was contrary to, to any other racial policies which they already had. This, unfortunately, did not entirely save the whole entire Roma population, but it did slow down and, and uh, limit the, the discrimination and the killings of the, of the Romas in, in Bosnia. After the war, the communist regime of Josip Broz, known as Tito, persecuted many religious scholars across the country. They included Dervish Korkut, who at the time was one of the most prominent Muslim scholars in Yugoslavia. After the Second World War, he started to publicly talk about what the new government was doing wrong. And since he was one of the most educated people living at that time in Sarajevo, the communist government did what they did, uh, what they did to all other dissidents at that time. They uh, proclaimed him an enemy of the state. And the easiest way you could proclaim somebody as an enemy of the state is by saying that he was a collaborator with the, the foreign occupying forces during the Second World War. So this was something, um, an artificial accusation which was uh, prescribed to him in 1947 by a kangaroo court in Sarajevo, and he was sentenced to eight years imprisonment. Korkut spent seven years in prison. 
After his release, he became curator at Sarajevo City Museum, where he worked until the end of his life. He died at the age of 81 in 1969. Because he had been deemed an enemy of the state, many people were afraid to attend his funeral. It took almost 50 years for Korkut to be recognized as a hero by his nation and the world. After the Second World War, Mira Papo was married to a communist partisan officer. When Dervish Korkut was arrested in 1947 for collaboration with, with uh, the, the f occupying forces, Mira Papo could not testify uh, for him at court because uh, she was threatened by the communists that uh, she and her family would be kicked out onto the street and lose all, uh, all privileges in, in, the new, in the new government. So she did not have the chance to testify on his behalf. Mira Papo immigrated to Israel in the 1970s and she did not know about his fate until uh, 1994 during the, the siege of Sarajevo. She, she read in a local uh, uh, Israeli newspaper the story of uh, Dervish Korkut. And then she decided to uh, uh, make things right by writing a letter to Yad Vashem and telling the whole story of Dervish Korkut, how he saved her and how he saved Haggadah. In 1994, Korkut and his wife, Servet Aliush, were finally recognized as righteous among the nations by Yad Vashem, Israel's memorial to the victims of the Holocaust. Righteous among the nations are non-Jews who risked their lives to save Jews from murder by the Nazis for altruistic reasons. In 1992, when the Bosnian War started and the city of Sarajevo was under siege, the Sarajevo Haggadah was saved one more time by a Muslim. Dr. Enver Imamovic, professor of history at Sarajevo University, in uh, April 1992, the siege of Sarajevo started. Uh, Bosnian Serb forces encircled Sarajevo and started bombarding the city. The National Library was basically uh, on the front line. And at that time, a Bosnian historian uh, called Enver Imamovic, he entered the, the, the National Museum, which at that time was, was abandoned. Uh, and he managed to rescue, together with members of the Bosnian Special Police Forces, he managed to rescue the Haggadah from, from the National Museum and to take it to the central bank, uh, in, into the vault of the central bank in, in, in Sarajevo. And in this way, the Haggadah was kept uh, uh, safe and, and uh, unknown to the public uh, during the whole siege of Sarajevo. The Haggadah came here along with the Sephardic Jews and it has managed to survive inside uh, Bosnia for the last 500 years. So in some way, the Haggadah, the fate of the Haggadah symbolizes the fate of Bosnia itself. Thank you.